been a, again, um, the, the actual nominees will be discussed uh, in confidence uh, for privacy reasons, but this is the appointment process. Uh, and uh, uh, Austin, welcome to the table. Uh, do you want to make a brief comment about the uh, process? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this report basically explains the, uh, the selection process for the Youth Advisory Panel. Uh, the Youth Advisory Panel selection process uh, has been open for about two weeks. And then over the past two months, um, we got over uh, 250 applications. And out of that, we, uh, pro we are proposing 21 uh, put members, uh, 21 candidates there. So this uh, selection process is uh, slightly different from the previous term in a sense that this is a region-wide approach and um, uh, which makes it slightly different in a couple of areas. One, this uh, selection process opened up the opportunity of the membership to not just the uh, uh, local youth council members but also wider uh, young Aucklanders aged between 14 and 24. Another aspect is that the uh, former Youth Advisory Panel uh, strongly recommended the, uh, um, the makeup of diverse uh, youth panel this term, including the, the voices of Māori youth, uh, as per the uh, uh, rang Rangatahi to Rangatira, which is one of the principles in the uh, I'm Auckland Strategic Action Plan. Based on that, we invited and encouraged uh, wider Rangatai Rupu to participate in the selection process and design process and also interview process. And most of all, uh, this time, this whole process was designed by uh, young people uh, as opposed to uh, staff members or organizations. So they were invited to co-design the process uh, by providing recommendations to council staff and based on those recommendations, we actually, staff actually designed the selection process. Thank you very much, uh, Austin. I think the motion is moved by Fisser Collins. Is it, have we got a seconder Second. here? Seconded, uh, Richard Hills. Um, right, uh, there may be, I, I think we can run questions and comments together on this. I don't think it's controversial. Uh, Councillor Collins. I think so. Mine's uh, uh, more comments. I'm happy, oh, one question in there. Happy to <laughs> recommend uh, the report, and I'm really excited about the process that was undertaken in engaging with our young people, allowing them the opportunity to design, co design uh, the way in which they uh, got others involved. We had, uh, we talked about this uh, at length uh, last week at the workshop of the Community Development and Safety. A committee which was held at Tupu Library in Ōtara, and whilst there was uh, probably unnecessarily defensive uh, presentation from one particular person, otherwise it was well received by the committee and there was really good engagement about it. The one question I did have upon further reflection, sir, is under um, part 11 of the report you'll see that the advisory panel, or the, sorry, that the youth advisory panel has gone from 10 meetings previously to seven this time round. I know this is a process report, but I am just tabling my uh, concern that uh, the, the inability to meet as regularly as previously may cause, um, I don't know, uh, uh, um, allowing young people to really come together and engage, I'm not so sure that we've got this particular right, so I just thought I'd particularly right. So I just thought I would table that, and upon further reflection too, I thought I'd consult uh, some of the reports. In one report it said there is a pay imbalance uh, between what the Youth Advisory Panel are getting and other panels, and whilst that isn't a major concern of mine, one of the re uh, reasons behind the pay difference was that our young people uh, might not be as experienced as others. So I'm really interested in some of that rationale thinking, and I think we need to uh, reconsider some of the findings from uh, the review that was undertaken too. But I'm happy to commend the report, but just thought I would lay some of those reflections on the table too. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Collins. Uh, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've got a question around uh, the application process and shortlisting, particularly item 22. I have a person um, in our ward who applied and wasn't successful and they made the point, you know, if you're a young person and you just get your first rejection by email, I, I just wonder if that's kind of um, 
we can look at a better way of doing that. Uh, my understanding, it was done on a Friday afternoon, and the way the young person put it to me is that, um, you know, that was pretty hard. It wrecked my weekend, and just to be told by email in a few words. So I just wondered if we could potentially discuss with the panel um, a better way of, of, it's a bit like, you know, text rejection or whatever it is they talk <laughs> about in youth, um, not being anywhere near something like that. Um, I'm not being a youth person, but just wonder if you could discuss it and look at potentially a better way mm. of telling people who are, young, especially our young people who apply, that and they're not successful, is there a better way of doing it other than just an email on a Friday afternoon? Yep, I, I think that's probably a fair point to consider um, because people put their name forward with the best of intentions and uh, it and particularly when you're young, you're probably more likely to be vulnerable to a, exactly. a rejection of yeah. that nature. Uh, I don't know whether you want to comment to Austin or simply take that on board and Just think about different a different way of doing it uh, next time around. Um, Thank you. Just yep, you've yep. taken it on board. <laughs> There's no other comments. Uh, I just uh, indicate that because Councillor Casey has uh, overall responsibility in the area of the demographic panels, uh, I've uh, uh, communicated with her and, and she is, she is uh, happy with the process that's followed. And I've got to say it's actually quite revolutionary that the young people organised that process themselves and, and did it so effectively. And I'll comment on the quality of the applicants in the next session. So um, thank, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, it's been, oh sorry, we've got now two people wanting to speak that I hadn't noticed before. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Philippina and then Councillor Hills. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, it's really a, 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 a follow on from what Councillor Collins has just asked around the meetings. I mean, <clears throat> I know this particular agenda item is a, 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 around the process. Good question, which I didn't really consider until now. And that is where can we end up putting a recommendation if, if it is required around the meetings? We already passed. Because it just, I mean, from, from going from 10 to 7 and, you know, I mean, and I know that it, within the report it's around the budget, but it just, it just appears, it, it just appears as if we're sort of treating them differently even though they had 10 meetings in the previous triennial. We're now saying, look, um, we, we only want to give you seven because there is constraint. So I, it's a process question, Your Worship, as to if we... I, I'm assuming that if there's going to be a change, it has to be through a recommendation or notice of motion to change the meetings from the seven that we have in the terms of reference to ten, if that is the will. I'm asking, so what is the process that needs to be followed, please? If I recall rightly, that was, uh, and I'll, I'll ask the officials to comment on it, that was a trade-off for keeping uh, 21 members, which is a much larger number of members uh, than any of the other demographic panels. And I, my understanding was that that was agreed to at that time, but um, uh, either Marguerite or Austin may wish to comment on that. Yes, that's correct. So at the time we put the the terms of reference for all the panels in front of the governing body, the, the membership of the youth panel was raised and um, the governing body made the decision to go back to 21. So we had to compensate for the, uh, for the budget. So, Chair, supplementary yep. to that. Supplementary. So in the triennial, the last triennial, how many members were on the youth panel? Um, so through the chair, there were 21 <laughs> members, and yeah. then they met up every six weeks. So that meant uh, seven, maximum eight meetings per year for oh, youth advisor okay. panel. I, and, and I think, Chair, then that's the clarification that, that I'm, I'm glad you've told me there was seven to wait. So we really haven't um, okay. penalised the youth panel because okay. there was 21 in the last triennial, 21 in this triennial. So at least I know it's seven to eight. So look, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank just you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Hills. Cool. Yes, just quickly, thank you, um, Mayor. Uh, just want to thank the team and everyone involved. I know it was very difficult, but this was the first time a, a process had been used regionally for to make sure every area had um, the same and the fair way to and a transparent way to get people onto the committee, uh, onto the panel, just like the other advisory panels. I know it was difficult, I know it was tough, 
Um, I know you involved a lot of young people. I know Catherine at the back there, you know, and a lot of others put a lot of effort into this. Um, and yeah, I know that uh, comments about um, being defensive by Councillor Collins, I I've known <laughs> Catherine for a very, very, very long time and that's just the way she's always spoken, very passionate, very upfront, very, um, very forthcoming on those kind of issues, especially around youth. So just want to thank everyone involved because I know it was a mammoth task and all the panel members who um, interviewed the large number of candidates. Um, but I think hopefully that we can keep a lot of those young people who also applied connected in the in the fold, and I think they're a good um, touchstone around the city for, for things that affect not only young people but for the future of the city as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. And finally, Councillor Cooper. No, it's right. I think oh, yeah. the question was answered. Okay. Uh, um, thank you very much. Uh, so the resolution <laughs> has been moved by Councillor Collins, uh, seconded by Councillor Hills. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried.